Good afternoon and welcome to Jeff and the Rabbi. Got some questions for you. Good topic today. The topic is Jacob and uh, him stealing or getting the blessing that he wasn't supposed to have. So it brings me back to my past. So I'm going to tell a little story here. Back in my youth, you know, about time? back in my youth a few years ago, when I was young and I went to high school, as we talked about, the Herman Goring Prep in Virginia, I remember there was a time I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I mean, I was sweating in a total panic. I just remembered that I had a paper, a short story, was due that day for my English class. Hadn't done it. It's 5 in the morning. I'm freaking out. I'm panicking. I happened to go look in the little box I have in my closet where my older brother, who took this class from the same teacher two years ago, he wrote some papers. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, you know, just, you know, I'm always thinking of others. I said, how can I let my parents down? Can I get my, would, how horrified would my parents be if I got an F? My mother and my father, how right. disappointed they would be. So I said, for them right. to do the right thing, do the ends justify the means. And I said, yes, they did. So I went in there and took a pen. That's what we used in the old days to write with a pen. We didn't have the computer. And I copied almost, well, not, not, I wouldn't say word for word. I might have changed a few things in, but I copied it in my handwriting and I turned in the paper. And one of the reasons I did this, or the, the, the teacher at this time, she must have been in her 70s, very ditzy, and in fact, I think maybe semi-senile. And she was probably already into the medicinal marijuana thing, I think even back then. It, so the, I said, the chances, the odds, the possibilities of getting caught in this are negative next to nothing. So I turned it in. Was I right? Did the ends justify the means? I don't know. But first of all, how'd it go? Well, <laughs> let's get, to it the didn't get started. It did not go as well as I thought it was going to go. This woman, who was senile, who was probably stoned, who had no idea what she ate for breakfast she that morning, you? She not only remembered that paper, but saved that paper, which she didn't even get a good grade on. Saved that paper, found the thing immediately, caught just like that. So my parents had to come into school. Jeez. I got an F on the paper and got suspended for three days. Jeez. Now, wow. granted, granted, unlike Jacob, my punishment I'm wasn't... I'm sitting it. next to convicted felon. <laughs> Absolutely. Now my I could have had a worse. I know Jacob's punishment was worse. Obviously, I did not get exiled to South Alabama. Yeah, right. And I did not get tricked into marrying my, uh, my wife's older sister. Ooh, that would have been a little worse. So, so it wasn't that bad. But things didn't work out well. But I thought the ends justified the means. Yeah, well, I guess, uh, you know, crime doesn't pay. Crime did that's, not that's pay. That's that other adage, huh? It did not work out well. Crime doesn't pay. You know, this is what everyone, when they read this story, everyone's yeah. like, you know, how could Jacob do that? He's like, I have truth. He's right. Honest. Right. He's the good guy. As a matter of fact, it says that Jacob was used to sit in the tents. He's a studious guy. He's the bookworm guy. You know, I've even seen some midrashim that say that he used to have a pocket protector. Wow. You know, for oh. like, this is oh. to show you, like, he was, like, such oh. a, like, bookish guy. Nerdy. Nerdy. And then along comes Esau. Now, Esau... He is Ish Sadeh, the man of the field. He's a hunter. He always is, you know, serving the hunt. And everyone likes him. He's popular. He's, you know, he's out there. He's the man of the world. And yet, and it says particularly clearly that Rebecca likes Jacob, but they're twins. But um, Jake, uh, Isaac, the father, like Isa. He likes that, the guy, the sportsman. He tends to write. I mean, you know, you, you know, the kid that can do things. One so. kid plays football, one kid reads poetry. Okay. Right. <laughs> Where is he going to go in life? Right. You know, is it, what's no, going to happen? Right. So Isaac wants to bless Isa. Rebecca doesn't like this. She's going to undermine the whole pro program. She calls in Jacob. She says, tells Jacob, dress up like Isa. Because remember, Isaac was already elderly and blind right. Right. at the time. Go in, pretend that you're Esau. I'll prepare the food so it looks like you know you're bringing in some fresh hunt, some venison. He loves venison. He's, Isaac had like a real soft spot yeah. for venison. Right. I'll prepare some venison, and then he'll bless you, thinking that it's Esau. And Jacob gets the blessing. So everyone screams and hollers, "Not fair! Is this how we go about our business?" You know, why didn't Rebecca go in to, to Isaac and say, listen, Isaac, I think you're making a mistake here. Right, that's, that's a good question. You know, look at our poor son Jacob here. Or, you know, be above board. Or, let me even ask you a better question. Is it really worth it? You know, is it really worthwhile to steal a blessing? How much is a stolen, ble stolen blessing worth? 
That's a good point. Does, Does it, it work? <laughs> do you get blessed? Right. If you stole the blessing, do you get blessed? Does that really work? And you could even ask a better question. What is a blessing anyway? Right, right. You know, like, let's say Isaac blessed Esau. Does that change destiny? Or, or the real question, if Isaac blessed, e blessed Esau, would Jews hunt? Today. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Here we are. Not, not hunters. Not you too don't much. Hunt. No. Jews don't hunt. Too no. much. Well, you know, it's the Shkita thing. It's that, that ritual slaughter. Right. Because um, it's really hard to like shoot him like right in the neck. You, like can't, the you can't shoot like kindly. <laughs> yeah. Kind of nice no, what you have to do is you have to like mount a uh, blade. Crossbow, maybe. Uh, right. Okay. Um, a blade with your crossbow, and they shoot him so that you get him right across the neck. Right. That's a pretty tough shot. It's hard. I got it's bad. it. bad. You know, you got to get the right angle right. and everything. You got to get him to slow down. Now, actually, interestingly enough, the sages say that Esau, Esau was so good that he could actually slaughter wild animals kosher. Wow, okay. So he could actually slaughter a deer. He was such a good archer. So he was really, really the tops, you know. Pretty good. Yeah. But the bottom line is, like all these questions, what does a blessing do? If you steal a blessing, does that gain? Do you gain anything? Is a stolen blessing worth, worth anything? You know? So have lots of questions here. But actually, you could go back like we always do. Go back and understand what's really happening here. What did Isaac have in mind? when he's blessing him? That's a good question. You know, what does where, where's, where's he want to do? Well, what, he's got the two sons. Now what's going to happen? Now, he had already lost the birthright, right? Is this the, or is this the same thing? Okay, that's a really good question, too. We know the story earlier. When Isaac is sitting Shiva, he's in the mourning period for his father, Abraham. Right. Esau comes in. He's in a big rush. Medrash says that he had just committed adultery with Nimrod's wife, and oh. Nimrod the king was after him. That's not a good thing. But anyway, he comes in, and um, he says, give me this. Jacob's making some lentil soup to give to his father. Esau says, I want the soup. And Jacob says, no, you got to sell me the birthright, because I want to be the firstborn. Birthright's pretty important, right? It's a real, right. it's a real document. It's a right to claim not only double share in the property, you know, the way we do it in a birthright in Jewish law is that the eldest son gets a double portion. So let's say there's three, there's two sons. They divide the property into three portions. The older one gets two and the other one gets one. Right. So getting the birthright is pretty important. Esau says, eh, I'm going to die anyway, meaning he was living on the edge. Right. He didn't even vision himself being an heir. He didn't think he was going to even live that long. Right. You know, I'm not going to be around. When it comes time to divide up the estate, you know, I'm going to be long. The way I'm living, the lifestyle right. I lead, I'm going to be long gone. So therefore, yeah, sell it. So Jacob bought the birthright. The question is, did Isaac know about that? Did Isaac even know about that? Well, it doesn't say, does it? No. So what did Isaac have in mind? Let me raise the ante just a little bit. Okay. Do you think that Isaac didn't know who these two boys were? Well, I've heard that asked. But they put a little hairy stuff in his arms because one yeah. of them was hairy. So, you know. But I mean, did he not know their nature? I mean, anyone could see that Esau is a wild guy. Jacob sits and studies. Right. Right? As a matter of fact, we have a verse here. It just so happens I got the Torah right here in front of me. Good. It says right before the story starts, it says Esau was 40 years old. And they're, interestingly enough, they're 40 years old, these two right. boys. Not, not, like not little, little boys. Okay. Right. 40 years old, and he married a woman named Judith. That sounds like a nice Jewish name. Right. The daughter of Be'eri the Hittite. Mm -hmm. And he married another woman named Basmat the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and they were a source of bitterness to Isaac and to Rebekah. Okay. So 
Esau married out. Isaac and Rebekah were aggravated, but they knew what happened. It wasn't like Isaac didn't know what's going on. He married Hittites. Isaac knew very clearly that Abraham had told Eliezer to find a wife for, for Isaac, but under no conditions marry Hittites. Right. They right. can't marry Hittites at all. Here he goes out and marries a couple of Hittite women. So it was, you know, it, it aggravated Isaac. It aggravated Rebecca. So how could Isaac now want to give the blessing to Esau when he knows he did this? Okay. So therefore, you have to ask yourself a question. What did Isaac really have in mind? What did he really have in mind? So a good way to tell what he had in mind is to see what he actually said. Uh -huh. Hey, what an idea. That's a good point. What an idea, huh? What did he say? So what did he say? So when Jacob comes in, dressed up like Esau, right. and Isaac blesses him, thinking it's Esau. So now we'll find out what blessing did he want to give Esau. Well, we know what he eventually gave him, but I don't but know. But what did he want? Whatever he says to Jacob, okay. that's what he that wanted to give Esau, because okay. he thinks it's Esau. Right. So we finally, you know, we get to find out what he said. So he says to him as follows. Um, he says, may God give you from the dew of the heavens and the fat places of the earth and much grain and produce of the wine press. Okay. Okay? Um, you will be the powerful person over your brother, and your mother's children will bow down to you. Okay. So where did he give him? What was the big blessing he gave him? Again, I'll read it in English. He said, May God give you the dew of the heavens and the fatness of the earth and abundant grain and wine. People will serve you. Well, maybe, maybe he's going to make him rich. Rich. Make him rich, is it? And, and people get to serve him. Right. Right? So, but including his brother. And, and even your brother. Yeah. Right. Now, any talk there about God, no. uh, about you know, spiritual, anything like that, it's clear he blesses him with abundant grain and wine. Okay? Well, that's true. So that means he's going to be rich. So later on, then what happens? And then he comes in. Then the real Esau. Right, comes. right. So the imposter Esau, right. Jacob says, "Okay, got the blessing," and he leaves. Then in comes Esau, probably driving a Harley or something. Right, like I'm that. sure. He Pulls in, you know, right. driving a Harley, noticing that Jacob is leaving. A it's strange. What's you know, what's Jacob doing? Comes in with his venison. He goes in. He serves the meal, and um, and Isaac says, he says, "Who? Where?" Is the one that hunted the game and brought it to me. And I partook of it all before you came. And I blessed him. And then Isaac says, he should be blessed. Whoa. Okay. He, as soon as he finds out that he was hoodwinked, instead of saying, that rotten, no good imposter, right. he says, he should be blessed. He ratifies the blessing to Jacob. Why? Yeah. So it sounds to me like even he was a little bit queasy right. about what was going on here. Then Aesop screams. He cried out an exceedingly great and bitter cry. And he said to his father, bless me too. So Jacob says, well, your brother, your brother came with cleverness and he took your blessing. So he says, oh, no, you know, he outwitted me twice. Now it's the second time he outwitted me. Right? There was a great medrash that says, Jake, Isaac says, second time? What do you mean? So he says, well, he took the birthright too. And Isaac says, what? He took the birthright also? You mean you sold the birthright? Yeah. Oh, had I known that. Right. Oh, anyway, I I then he said, didn't you reserve any blessing for me? So he said, well, I made him a lord over you and all of his kin. I gave him his servants. With grain and wine, I supported him. So he says, don't you have one blessing for me? So Isaac said, behold, of the fatness of the earth shall be your dwelling and the dew from the heavens above. By your sword you shall live, but your brother you shall serve. Okay. Now, again, even when he gives him a blessing, what does he give? 
the fat of the earth. Right. Right? right. right. It's, it's, the, this whole blessing is all about wealth. It's all about money here. Now, do you think Isaac really cared for the money? Well, that's a good question. So was this blessing, have, did it have any meaning? Did either one of the blessings have any meaning? Yeah, so, so what's going on here? It's a, I saw, it's a really fascinating idea here. And the idea was like this, that Isaac knows that sometimes wealth and spiritual advancement don't go together. Right. It happens very often that people have a lot of money, spend a lot of time either spending their money, making their money, right. protecting their money, repairing the things that they bought. As it says, the more uh, possessions you have, the more worries you have. That's true. Right? Yep. You know, if you got one air conditioning unit, that's one air conditioning unit that breaks down. If your house has four air conditioning units, that's four units to break down. Right? So, well, you know, the more money you have, the more you have to spend time with it. So many have noted that sometimes, and I just saw a lady, actually just spoke to a lady from Manhattan Beach. Right. Manhattan Beach is a neighborhood in Brooklyn just across from Manhattan. They got wiped out. Uh, Sandy yeah, sure. wiped them out. I mean, you know, they are literally on the beach, you know, the houses. Yeah. Like beautiful view, fantastic view of Manhattan. And all that water just took it out. Took oh. them out. Just uh. took them out. So she said that there are people there they're literally they're walking around the streets like like stunned, you know they they can't believe they they just people people are walking the streets crying, they're hauling out all their possessions from their houses, right. bringing them out to the curb and it's just horrible like all this stuff you know closets full of clothing and all this stuff. So she said that she'd been living in that neighborhood for a long 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 time. Over the years, the neighborhood's really gone upscale. Right. So a lot of her neighbors like have houses that are worth ten times hers because she's got like an old house from like way back. And she sees some of these people, like the stuff that they're hauling out of the houses, like they got oh. wrecked, is just astonishing. Like there's some very wealthy people just got devastated. Oh, yeah. So she said, like, she lives more modestly. So she also got hurt, but she didn't lose nearly as much as they did because she right. didn't have anywhere near as much as they did to lose. Right, right. So she, you know, it's sometimes like living a simpler life frees you up to pursue other things, like spiritual pursuits and all right. that. Okay, now, Jacob, Isaac felt, Asa, he's the worldly guy. You know what? I'm going to give him a blessing. He'll be very successful in all of his business dealings, all of his worldly right. stuff. And, I, and Jacob, he is a spiritual guy. We'll give... Jacob the spiritual blessings. I'll give Esau the worldly blessings. But Jacob didn't get the spiritual blessings. Rebecca comes along and said, you know, spiritual people need to eat also. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? Good you point. know, it's you know, it's nice, you know, to free him up from all of the spiritual burden. But you know, you're also turning Jacob into a pauper. And and you know, it's it's hard to study the Torah when you're hungry. That's a good you know, point. Yeah. hard to be spiritual when you're trying when you got holes in your shoes. So she says, you know, it can't work like that. We live in a world. We don't live in a world like you, Isaac, where you know, you like you're otherworldly. You know, you you dismiss all worldly right. pleasure. You just want to be spiritual. Isaac, it doesn't work like that. We live in a real world. Even the spiritual people have to eat in this world. Right. Spiritual people need a living also. And if you make, give Esau all the blessing for the physicality, and Isaac has the blessing of spirituality, he will always be a prisoner to Esau who holds the money. Right, right. Because okay. he's always going to have to come with his hat in his hand and, and play, please, Esau, can I have another handout? Could you give me a little money? I mean, I'm, I'm coming up short. I'm not able to pay the rent this month. You know, it's cold in my house. I need a little money for fuel. Could you please help me? And he says, yeah, okay. But, you know, I want this and that. Right. Esau will always be in power. So she said, no. Jacob needs some security also. Jacob needs a hand a foot in this world. So what was the blessing that he got? The blessing that he got, interestingly enough, was that he's going to have from the dew of the heaven and the fat of the earth, and that your brother, 
your mother's sons will prostrate themselves to you. You will be a lord to your brother. Right. So now Jacob doesn't have to bow down. But it's actually what was going to happen was that Isaac was going to bless Esau and give him all the power in this world, which would have made him, because the guy in Yiddish, they say, in, in, he, in Yiddish it rhymes, says, Dervas hat the mea hat the dea. In other words, if you got the bucks, you can make the opinions. Yeah, Your opinion right. counts, yeah. right? But he was going to give that. He yeah. was going to give it to him because he thought, good, we'll give him all this worldly stuff and he'll spend all his time with all this worldly stuff and that'll free up Jacob to be a right. spiritual man, right. a holy right. man, not burdened by the, spirit, by the physicality of this world. And Rebecca was a little bit more pragmatic. She said, Isaac, don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to hurt him. In practice, it, it seems like a nice idea in principle, but in practice, he, you're going to end up making him a slave to his brother. So that's why he said, okay, Jacob can keep that blessing. Then, right, so when he was swindled, right. because he knew he really was looking out for Jacob. Right. He wasn't right. trying to hurt Jacob. He thought he was helping this Jacob. Help Jacob do what he has to do. Okay. When he realized that he had been swindled, he said, you know what, I'm going to leave it with Jacob too, because the truth is, he knew what Esau was. He wanted to help Jacob. He thought he was helping Jacob, and now that it turned out this way, I'm not going to take anything away from him. He should be blessed. So he shall also be blessed. Now, how did that change our faith as Jews? I mean, it, it, by, by taking this blessing, but now knowing that we're going to have the money, we're going to have the big, I mean, is, right. how did it change it? So it is interesting. It would seem as though if it was going to be the ace of the way, if right. the blessings for the world had gone to ace of, right. then we would be a different type of people. We might be more um, Buddhist. Okay. Right? Okay. And yeah. those Buddhists are like very non worldly. Right. You know, like just we don't want anything to do with the world, simple, you know, basic robes, right. you know, uh, totally spiritual, as much away from physical as we can be. And this way, we see the Jews are very physical people. You know? We eat and we drink and we don't feel at all embarrassed if, if someone has a nice house or good clothing or there's nothing wrong with that. We are in the world. We're in the world and we're not embarrassed about that. And we've had, we've had many times when we as a people have been very wealthy and we certainly have always had times when Jews, particularly Jews, have been wealthy there's no crime in it. And as a matter of fact, it's a wonderful thing. Because now, a poor Jew can turn to a wealthy Jew. Right. Instead of making Jews the, the, the spiritual right. caste that always has to go to the non-Jew for some, for some sustenance, we've got our own wealthy Jews. So, the ends are great. But it's still the question. Yeah, did the means... Is it justify. Is, is it justify? Because the question is, Jacob... And Rebecca, I would say, went against the, the principles of the Torah. Or okay, did they? And, and maybe okay? they did. So what I would like to say is that, in truth, the ends don't justify the means. Certainly not always, and I'm not sure if ever, if the ends justify the means, because we're pretty clear. Like, for example, if you are supposed to kill someone, it's not a case of the ends justifying the means. You're allowed to do it. And when you're allowed to do it, you do it. And when you're not allowed to do it, you don't do it, even if you think you need to. Right. But in this case, the way I'm explaining it is, Isaac wanted to bless Jacob. He just he had was it all wrong. Look, he was looking out for Jacob's best interest. He was for Jacob. He wasn't And Rebecca deceived. couldn't convince him of this. Right. He wasn't deceived by Esau. Right. He knew what was going on. He thought this will be best for Jacob. So when Rebecca deceived him, he realized, yeah, you know, I'm not going to take away, once having given the blessing to, I, to Jacob, I'm not going to take away from him. I'm looking out for his best, and maybe I'm wrong. Now I realize it. Maybe it's not good for me to have put him in a position where he could get hurt by his brother Esau. So therefore, this is not a case of the ends justifying the means. Right. This is a case of Rebecca trying to open Isaac's eyes to do what Isaac himself wanted, wanted to, to do. do. Now, did, though, because of this, did Jacob in his life suffer any repercussions for this at all? Well, 
One thing's for sure, he's got to deal with Esau. He does, he does all deal the way Esau. down the line, till the end. And you know, to us, Esau's the Nazi. Right. Esau's right. the Nazi, right? And that means like, he's dealt, dealt with him there, he has to run away. Immediate repercussions, he has right. to leave home. Because Esau's going to kill him. And it says Esau hated him, and Esau said, I'm going to kill him. So that's number one repercussion happened right away. And it didn't let up. It didn't let up. It doesn't let up all the way down the road. Right. Asa wants, is angry at Jacob, wants to dominate him, wants to kill him, wants to wipe him out. Asa sees in Jacob the antithesis of him. Right. Everything right. that's bad about the world, he wants to wipe him out. Right. So, yeah. so again, there's still Asa, even today, is still looking to get revenge. Uh, that's right. And Esau is very, he's a dominator. By the way, just like an idea about Esau. It says, Esau was born, he was reddish complexion. Right. It says that he saw the red lentil soup. And he said, give me that red stuff, right? Later on, his blessing is, you'll live by the sword. Well, swords spill blood. Right. That's right. red, right? Esau has a child. The child's name is Edom. Which means red. Which means red. Hmm. You know, he named his kid Red. You know. You know. Hey, Red. You know. He might have red hair. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. He called him Red, and therefore the nation Edom, which is Rome, we called Edom. Rome is red. So what's with all the red? That's a good question, right there. Yeah. What's with all this red, red, red? Well, what is red? So it says even he was born under the red star, and the red star means people are born in a red star are murderous people. Okay. He has a lust for murder. Now, the lust for murder is really a lust for control. Like you dominate other people. People get in your way, you crush them, you destroy them. He feels a need to destroy anything that is in his way and to dominate, big on domination. Yeah. The Roman Empire, later on the Third Reich, right. and a whole bunch in between. Domination, control, and crushing anyone else that's in their way. Those are all the traits of the red. Right. The red, the red guy. And that's who Esau is. And therefore, the, the last part of the blessing that he says to Esau is, and this is something we all have to watch out for, he says, um, he says, I gave you, uh, the, I already gave him from the fat places of the earth, but you'll also have from the flat base, you will live in the fertile places of the world, you will live by your sword, you will serve your brother. But it will be, if you bring him down, you can throw his yoke off from you. In essence, he put them like on a teeter-totter. So pretty much said, you, you go for it. <laughs> right. If you can bring him down, then you'll be up. Right. But if he goes up, you're down. Wow. But you can't have the two of them up. And therefore, Esau spends a lot of time keeping Jacob down because to keep Jacob down keeps him up. That's his job in the world is to keep Jacob down, which keeps him up. So I guess we see from the story, I'm going to see if I get a moral. Of this Wrap story. her up. Moral, yeah. The moral of the story is, yes, it worked out the right way. Everything worked out the right way. Maybe it wasn't you. Maybe you didn't go the right path to do it, but it definitely worked out the right way. So would it have worked out if, if, if this teacher I had hadn't for mm -hmm. some reason had this weird senile vision and remembering this paper, would that have been good? My parents would have been happy. Nobody would have got suspended. I would have been, got a good grade in the class. Does that worked out just as well, too? I, you know, in a bitch of the fact that you got cut, she probably says those damn Jews are always trying to Oh, you know that. Goldstein. <laughs> she, I she was senile, but she was able to remember that. <laughs> I could have expected that from Goldstein. Right, because there's no right. doubt about it. Yeah, so that wasn't, uh, that probably didn't like play too well for the Jews. No, it didn't. I don't, I don't think little Jeff made a, uh, made a, a consecrated God's name on that day. No, from that day on, everybody was going, oh, the Jews cheat. And that's pretty much right. it. That's, that's all it was. I think most probably the ends, from this story we see the ends do not justify the means, and you probably should have played it straight. You should have played it straight. Taken, taken it on the chin. Well, if you had to. Okay, I probably, I probably, I, it, it actually would have worked out a lot better for me if I did, I think. I would have still right. that F, but I would have not gotten in a lot of trouble that I actually got it. All right, well, so Jacob, okay. but, but it worked out well for Jacob, but it worked out well for us. So I mean, worked out well for Jacob because had it not worked out like this for Jacob, 
Who knows what things would have looked like? The picture could have been very different, and we could have been a very spiritual people, but a very uh, unworldly people, right. meaning not have ever had... And could we a, have survived? Yeah, and, right. Could we have survived? And the way it is now, Jews do have... There's been plenty of poverty and plenty of down t times yep. in Jewish life, but there's been plenty of up times too and wealthy times. So well, that's good. Yeah. All right. So it all worked out for the better. But it's interesting. I like I like your take on it. Okay. That's good. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, next week, I guess we'll be back with another uh, exciting, exciting episode of Jeff and the Rabbi. That's right. All right. See you then.